So, Lindsay, thank you so much for, for joining me on this. We, we missed one aspect there in the Mike Freer case, which is that his constituency office was uh, hit by an arson attack recently as well. Can you understand his decision to, to step down? Of course, you know, and quite rightly, his partner is also very concerned. And what I would say is that, you know, the fight, Joe Cox, the fight that Sir David Amis and Mike was that target before Sir David. So you can understand the pressure he's been under, the worries that he's got for himself and, of course, his partner, but, of course, the staff who work for him as well. It is about remembering that we do have people who work with us. It is about the security and safety that really matters to me and how we can protect people. And, of course, I'm always and will be disappointed that people feel that they can't stand at the next election because of what the threats they've had. What I would say is we've got to work very closely. We've got to protect democracy. We've got to ensure the people who don't share our values will never be successful. And as I say, Sir David Amis, Joe Cox, what it does do is bring Parliament together, united, that we will never give in to terrorism or we will give in to threats. So what I would say is my job is to try and ensure that we can work to put the best security measures in place, not only just for MPs, but for their staff and their families as well, as well as protecting the House of Commons and all that work here. And that's why, you know, I've got confidence in our head of security, the measures that have been put there and the way that we never stop looking ahead to see what else we can do to protect MPs and the people who work with us. Are you suggesting, Sir Lindsay, that perhaps all MPs should have the type of security detail that government ministers have? What I would say is that I don't go into the details of what security measures we put in place. What I can tell you, we've come a long way in a very short time to look and ensure the measures are there, working very closely with all the police forces around the country. Because it's not just this building, it's about MPs back in the constituencies as well. And as I say, we do have measures in place. We continue to review those measures. And, of course, what we've got to do is ensure that those MPs, families and people who work with us are safe. But also it's about protecting democracy. As I say, people that may not share our values, but they will never, ever win. Um, uh, Mike Freer said um, that the threats he's faced recently um, uh, and some of the reasons for se stepping down, he said you can't divorce anti-Semitism from the threats and attacks he's faced. Do, do, do you agree with that framing? Is that the, the key risk and cause at the moment? We have lots of risk and we have lots of people who don't. Whether it's people who are white fundamentalists, the people there, the rise of the extreme right, to terrorists coming across. We face many threats uh, as members of parliament and that's the one thing that we've got to. We've got to assess that. And of course different things rise in different ways. And, of course, the conflict in the Middle East has brought different people to the forefront. Of course, we've also seen that Joe Cox, it was the extreme right that tragically robbed us of somebody who had a great future in this house. The fact that we saw a terrorist, lone wolves, who self radicalised at home, taking, and tragically, David Amos was also taken from us far too soon. And nobody should have to put up with threats like that. That's why I've got to work with whatever the threat is at the moment, working with security, working with the advice of the police and security agencies to try and ensure we are doing everything we can to protect the members, but also this about protecting democracy. Nobody should be able to win that. And I've got to say, wherever that comes from, we've always got to be ready. As I say, we've got police forces across the country that work together to try and ensure that our security package is delivered in the best way possible. Um, so, Lindsay, I, I wanted to ask about the overall tone of, of politics at the moment and whether... Uh, maybe it's a completely separate question, maybe it's vaguely linked to, to what we've just been discussing, but either way, would we all benefit if uh, politics was conducted in a, in a more open and genuine way and not so personal? I'd say PMQs in the last you know, a couple of weeks, certainly, but uh, as we look to the election and things building up, it's become quite personal. W would you like to see it more constructive? Of course, I want a nicer politics. And I want us to treat 
each other in a much better way than we've been seeing. We seem to be on election frenzy at the moment. We seem to be driven by the belief the election's coming tomorrow. Um, if it, you know, whether it's tomorrow or whether it's November, whenever it be, that is a long period. What we've got to do is ensure that the quality of politics is ensuring that people see the chamber. And of course, people reflect how we treat each other. And that's why I want us to have a, a nicer politics within the House, a nicer politics. And that's why I made that statement yesterday to try and turn down the heat of what's happening each Wednesday. Because in the end, don't be shocked if people react in the way that we react to each other. So what I want is nicer politics, kinder politics, and a politics that people say, actually, that is good. I want to see that niceness coming across, not just in the chamber, but it's the treatment of each other. And hopefully we can try and install that and try and turn down the heat on the election frenzy that seems to be happening at the moment. So, Lindsay, on, on the topic of election frenzy, on, and ending on a, uh, a more upbeat note, you, you've called uh, Sir Keir Starmer Prime Minister one, once or twice lately. Are you letting the polls get to your head? No, absolutely not. Look, I'll be quite honest. What people don't realise is the amount of noise and the distraction that's taking place. Some of it's quite deliberate, trying to distract, undermining, trying to deal with what's going on. People don't realise what's being shouted nearby, what's going on around me. And, of course, it's just that distraction. And it's nothing to do with the polls. And, of course, everybody can make mistakes. And I'm they just proving that point. They certainly can. I've been there many, many, many times. So, Lindsay, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. No, thank you.